Ryland, you may begin. Right. Did you know that we are exposed to radiation of our everyday lives? I mean, just walking around and standing, we're being exposed to radiation as we speak. Put it simply, one chest ray when you go to the ER is 0.1 millisieverts of radiation that we're exposed to. And that unit is used for the probability caused of radiation-induced cancer which is what they use to obviously diagnose cancer and how much you're exposed to if it actually causes damage. This is also equivalent to 10 days of being exposed to cancer, of our daily lives. So every day we're exposed to cancer. Now let's say you go in for a chest x-ray because you know, you're feeling shortness of breath, your chest is kind of hurting, you just fill off. So you, you know, your medical provider asks you, you know what, let's get you some Let's say that chest x-ray ends up turning into something they spot. You know, now they see something on your lungs, a tumor. So now they administer you, okay, let's get you seen into an actual oncologist to see what they think. That then turns into you on an operation table because they need to take a sample of it to see if it's carcinogenic. So comes back and it deems cancer. Now you're diagnosed with lung cancer because you have a tumor. So I'm here to tell you about radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is what they use as a treatment of a form of cancer. This is just one of the processes that you experience of going through the actual process of when they treat you for cancer. So I'm going to be talking about three things, the main points of radiotherapy of, what, of how it works, why it's essential in treating cancer, and the side effects of it. So how radiotherapy works. The process is used, uh, process uses the machine is like by somebody who like, I guess isn't a Star Wars or like some Back to Future movie, because like they named the machine Linear Accelerator, like that just sounds like very futuristic. The linear accelerator is actually used for when they treat cancer. So how this is done is you're going to be put on a table. They're going to have you put down, they're going to put lead pads on you. If you ever had an x-ray or chest x-ray, you know what I'm talking about. But the, in this specific sense, it's going to have a hole cut out of it. So that hole is going, going to be marked with dots. Either they're going to shave, or if your hair, they're going to shave your hair so they can get a pinpoint accuracy. The linear accelerator, There we go. The linear accelerator is actually a high intense beam of radiation that they use to pinpoint the cancer with. So if you have a tumor on your brain, for, for example, they're going to then put lead pallets all around your face as best as they can, and they're going to mark that tumor. This laser is actually going to do a 360 rotation around your entire body to pinpoint the radiation at 360 degrees to kill the tumor. Now, if you don't know what cancer is, first off, cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. You've seen a lot of people with cancer, as in, you know, they've had hair loss, you know, and they're very sickly, and you're, you're told not to touch them or be around them, certain stuff like that. Cancer is just uncontrolled cell growth where the cells continuously develop and they just continuously multiply and they can't stop. So that's why. This machine exists, and the pinpoint of radiation is because it's going to damage the DNA. Have you ever seen what a double helix looks like? When they pinpoint this radiation, it's actually going to split the DNA in half. So then it kills the cells entirely. And in the process, it also technically kind of damages your own natural normal cells. But your natural cells actually heal up a lot faster. So now, according to an article by ourworldanddata.org by Max Rosser and Hannah, or Hannah Ritchie titled Being Cancer. There's about 10 million people that die from cancer every year. Globally. Now, according to the same article, the most can the cancer that takes the most lives is lung cancer, followed by stomach cancer and colon cancer.
So when the living accelerator hits the cells, it obviously kills the cancer cells. It affects the normal cells by just damaging them, but they can easily be repaired a lot more than cancer cells because cancer cells are not actually natural cells. So now I've talked to you about how the linear accelerator, linear accelerator works. Let's talk about why it's essential. Okay? It's going to treat and help all forms of cancer. Stomach cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer, colon cancer, kidney, liver. All the types of cancers are going to be treated for this. It also, the same machine, can also be used on non-cancer uh, carcinogenic, ter carcinogenic tumors. So let's say that lung cancer that you had turns out to not be cancerous. They're still going to use that machine instead of cutting you open on an op operation table to see if that would actually kill the tumor and it would be able to go away. Another reason is, is, is let's say they, before they go in, they have a massive tumor that they've diagnosed you with. And I mean, this thing is protruding from your skin. It's really hurting you. They're actually going to use it to shrink it to give them a better chance of getting all the tumor out of you. Let's say they get it out, and obviously this tumor being so big, they can't get all of it. So now they're going to then go back with the laser, use it again to get the remaining missed carcinogenic cells. So we've discovered that it's essential and how it works. Let's talk about what actually happens after the patient. The side effects. This is going to damage normal cells, obviously. Like I said. When it damages the normal cells, this is why you get the side effects of cancer. You're going to be exposed to hair loss, memory loss, vomiting uncontrollably, and that all depends on which body part is treated. For example, the brain is mostly predominantly going to experience hair loss, vomiting, uh, you're going to forget stuff, obviously, and it's actually going to cause uh, blurry vision. So your vision's actually going to decrease after this treatment for a little bit before it actually returns to normal. After that, it's also, uh, for this, for let's say it's lung cancer, you're going to experience shortness of breath, uh, coughing, you're going to just coughing uncontrollably. And the list goes on with all the different types of cancers. Uh, colon cancer, it's going to be, you know, hard to you, bowel movements and stuff. I mean, it's, it's just an abundance of side effects that are issued for this. Now, also according to an article in Global Therapy, by uh, May Abiyo Wahabab, I believe. Uh, it's all, there's like 20 authors in there, so I'm not going to list them all here. On June 8, 2021, radiotherapy only consumes roughly 5% of the actual budget that's put into cancer treatment. So a lot of your money is going to drugs and hospital aid, hospitalization bills rather than getting hit with this pain. So now that I've talked to you about how it works, the essentialities of it, the side effects. The next time you see somebody with cancer, understand that they're going through a lot, and it's pretty painful. This entire process is not a short process that's overturned by overnight. So be patient with them if you have to see them, and understand that they have a lot on their plate. Thank you.